We're in one of Britain's favourite destinations. Is there anywhere that defies expectation as much as Tenerife? For decades, the Canaries' largest island has been a package holiday mecca, with miles of beautiful beaches, year-round sunshine and top quality all-inclusives, encouraging over 5 million of us to visit every year. But for those with an adventurous spirit, Tenerife gives so much more. Cycling, hiking, water sports, caving and some truly epic drives are just a sample of what's waiting for you outside the resort. Tenerife was formed by eruptions from Mount Tede, the highest peak in Spain, and the volcano at the centre of the island. These eruptions gave birth to some of Tenerife's most iconic landscapes, such as the Black Sand Beach at Los Gigantes, the boulder-strewn Tede National Park, and the rugged mountains and rainforests of Anaga. All this melts away at the coast into some of Spain's most idyllic beaches and lively resorts. Tourists began visiting North Tenerife in the 1960s, but it wasn't until the 80s when tourism boomed in the south, where the hotter and drier climate attracted British holidaymakers looking for guaranteed sun. Costa Adeje, Las Americas, Siam Park, Los Cristianos, these are all firm favourites with Tenerife's British visitors. However, I hope we can inspire you to explore Tenerife and experience everything it has to offer. It has never been easier to hire a car, go on an adventure and make more of your holiday. Join us as we head north into the heart of Tenerife. Would I find authentic Canarian culture? Could I find adventure on this most well-travelled path? And could I discover what made Tenerife into such an attractive destination in the first place? We leave the south behind to explore Tenerife's capital, Santa Cruz. And then on day two, we'll adventure into Tede National Park to discover some of the most epic landscapes I've ever seen. This is Tenerife, like you've never seen it before. Like any good adventure, our journey begins at the airport. After dropping the car with a handy meet and greet service, we were straight into a lounge before our flight. A quiet seat, all the food one could want, free drinks and high-speed Wi-Fi make a lounge a great way to start any trip abroad. Soon enough, we were boarding and on our way. After a four and a half hour flight, we touched down, as most tourists do, at Tenerife South Airport. From here, we had a holiday extras transfer already booked. We followed the instructions on our confirmation and were picked up by our driver at the car hire desks before being taken directly to our accommodation in Santa Cruz. After a long day's travel, this really does take the hassle away from what can be the most stressful part of any holiday. The next morning I woke up ready to start exploring Santa Cruz and first on the agenda was heading out to get a classic Spanish breakfast. So it might not be the healthiest way to start your day but it's definitely the tastiest. Uh, so we've got freshly squeezed orange juice, the churros and the star of the show which is this thick chocolate sauce. I mean it's come in a mug, I'm not sure if you're meant to drink it as well because that would be something else. But I know what you are meant to do is get these guys and dunk them in and then enjoy. Mm. Churros are a traditional Spanish and Portuguese breakfast snack made from dough created by mixing flour, water and salt. They're fried until crunchy and served with thick hot chocolate. They were delicious and I'm still craving them now. So after all that chocolate, I'm thinking it's a good idea to go and walk it off. So we're heading to Parque Garcia Sanabria. And to do that, we're using the trusted Google Maps. Simply type in where you need to go and follow the blue dots. Now there is a tram system that runs through town, but actually it's quickest just to walk most of the time. So we're gonna do exactly that. Parque Garcia Sanabria is an oasis of calm in the heart of Santa Cruz. 
Covering 17 acres, the park is named after the mayor who approved its construction in the 1920s. The park is used by locals for dog walking, exercising, relaxing and just generally unwinding. And as I walked along the sun-dappled pathways, I didn't see any tourists at all. The park's iconic flower clock is at the south entrance and was a gift from the Consul of Denmark to Tenerife in 1958. However, the highlight for me had to be finding a pond full of extremely vocal Iberian water frogs. Not only were they loud, they were huge. For our next stop, we were on our way to the African market and here I was definitely going to need some cash. So we're Tenerife being part of Spain, the currency is Euros and we've loaded up a cash card available through holiday extras to keep our money safe whilst we're on the trip. So you can use this pretty much anywhere and also take money out which we're going to need for the market now. While we're on the subject of money, it's worth noting that prices in Tenerife are a little lower than in the UK. In fact, the cost of living in Santa Cruz is a little lower than even some mainland resorts such as Benidorm. For example, our four bedroom apartment was 130 euros per night and an evening meal with drinks for our crew of four was 70 euros. But anyway, back to the market. The Mercado Nuestra Senora de Africa or Market of Our African Lady was built in a North African style in the 1940s. And it really does feel like something you might get in Marrakesh, very much like a souk. You've got all the market stalls centered around a main courtyard like this one. And you know what? It's really cool. The market invites you to just explore. And before long, I was getting stuck into it. These always taste best abroad, nectarines, so good. There's fresh fruit, veg, meat and fish on sale, as well as herbs, spices and all kinds of cooking ingredients. <laughs> this is like the craziest way to buy fruit. I had to, get, had to give them to them, I think they're going to weigh them. But if I was any shorter, there's no way those next trees would have made that, it to that lady. So I always find that nectarines taste best in mainland Spain. So let's see if it's the same for on Tenerife. Mm. And they're so good. And never as juicy back home. Look at that. The market's courtyards host small cafes and restaurants, which make a great place to stop for lunch if you're spending a day in Santa Cruz. And if you're staying in the city, then head here early in the morning to stock up on supplies before you head out exploring. The Auditorio de Tenerife is an architectural marvel and a symbol of Tenerife and the Canary Islands. Evoking the Sydney Opera House, the spectacular music and dance venue was completed in 2003 and inaugurated by Felipe de Bonon, the current King of Spain. The hall is surrounded by an urban park which, like Parque Garcia Sanabria, is used by locals. The Auditorio has a cafe with views out to the ocean, and if, like us, you've spent a busy day sightseeing in Santa Cruz, then this makes a great place to chill out with a drink and enjoy the fresh sea air. Before long, we were back on the road and heading to the final stop of our first day in Tenerife. A short way up the coast from Santa Cruz is Playa de las Teresitas. I'd heard great things about this beach and I was keen to see it for myself. So we're here on Teresitas Beach and my first impressions is that it feels like a real locals beach. You've got Spanish music playing in the background. There's not as many bars and restaurants as you might find in the south of the island, but you've got some beautiful views, you've got all the mountains. It's a massive beach that's so never going to feel that packed either. And I love it. I love the beach. I'm in my happy place right now. And can you blame me? Teresitas is everything you could want from a beach. It has miles of beautiful golden sand, calm waters and incredible views back across the Anaga Mountains. It's the kind of beach where you can while away the hours under the sun and the type of place that I could happily spend the entire day. My tip would be to make sure you're here for late afternoon into early evening. The sun sets over the mountains to the west and it makes for a picturesque end to your day. 
The setting sun was our cue to head back into town for the evening. Santa Cruz at night feels very different to the resorts in the south. If you didn't know you were in Tenerife, you'd probably think you were in a regional town on the Spanish mainland, far from any hints of tourism. Although Santa Cruz isn't set up for tourists, you can still get by with English. I'll be the first to admit that my Spanish leaves a lot to be desired, but I managed just fine. So we're sitting out in the square, soaking up the evening atmosphere, and I have to say that Santa Cruz has been awesome. I highly recommend coming up north and exploring this city because you really get a feel of the true Tenerife culture here. But all that's left for me to do now is to drink the sangria, enjoy this locally caught fish, and look forward to tomorrow. The next morning, we were up early and on our way to Tede National Park. There are coach tours that depart for Tede from the resorts in the south, but we believe that hiring a car with holiday extras is the best way to explore at your own pace. The views are spectacular, and you really need the freedom that your own car affords to enjoy them to their fullest. The view from the road, through the trees, over the clouds, is unlike anything else I've ever seen. And as we were driving, we could pick the perfect moment to stop and take it all in. So we've just pulled over because this lookout point is absolutely stunning. The drive itself has been amazing through the forest, but we've just seen this. We're above the clouds and I've never experienced anything like this before. It's amazing. And also we can see Mount Tede in the background there. That's where we're gonna be, we're gonna be hiking to soon. Um, it looks pretty big, <laughs> it looks pretty steep, um, but even this drive alone is enough. So if you don't feel like you can hike all the way up to the top, then I would highly recommend doing the drive up to at least this point because it's gorgeous. I could have stayed and looked out at the view for hours, but we had a volcano to climb. And so we were back in the car and pressing on. Eventually, the forest fades away and the terrain gets flatter as you head through the park towards Mount Tede. The landscape at the top of the park is otherworldly. So much so that the European Space Agency and NASA have used the park as testing ground for planned missions to Mars. And this is just part of the park's interest to the science community. The high altitude and Tenerife's lack of light pollution has made Tede into one of the best places in the world for astronomy. There's a world-renowned observatory and night sky tours are one of the most popular activities in the park. Before long, I was itching to get out of the car again and explore. It's really light, woo! <laughs> this is some lava from the volcano and it looks heavy but I can carry it and I'm an absolute wimp when it comes to being strong so yeah it's pretty cool let's see if we can get a bigger one this one super light <sighs> these rocks are so light because they're full strong. of air bubbles this can happen when rock is highly pressurized superheated and fired from a volcano Exploring the lava fields was fascinating and I was blown away by the scale of my surroundings. Looking out over the horizon, it was hard to imagine the magnitude of past eruptions and that there was once an even bigger volcano at the centre of Tenerife. This volcano was called Las Cañadas, but it collapsed to form the Caldera, a huge crater that is now part of the National Park. Although it's possible to hike all the way to the peak of Mount Tede, we opted to book tickets for the cable car. It's a quick and easy way to make it from base camp to the peak. Although be warned that the parking situation here is hectic to say the least. Parking was fun. It's a pretty busy place and there's not that much parking. Um, so we've come later on in the day, but actually, I think you'd probably be better off to come earlier if you want to avoid any queues. Although it's possible to buy tickets on the day, the Tede cable car is super popular and so I strongly recommend booking ahead online. There are limited spaces which sell out fast. The cable car itself is quite the experience. 
you're packed in tight and then pulled up the side of the mountain to the station near the summit. As the car passes the towers, it's quite stomach churning and I can almost guarantee everyone in your cable car will give a gentle woo as you go past each one. Wow. <laughs> After a short ride, you're greeted with yet another jaw-dropping vista across the Canary Islands. So we made it to the top of the cable car and the first thing I felt when I got out of the cable car was how cold it is. It really feels very fresh up here so jumper went on straight away and when you breathe it does feel like the air is quite thin. Um, so we're going to see how we go walking up to the top, see how our breath feels but that all aside the views are absolutely amazing like these views just keep getting better and better we're on top of the world here and it just feels incredible it really does on a clear day it's possible to see the other canary islands and from the cable car station i could see gran canaria on the horizon Scaling the summit requires a special permit, which is free and can be booked online. However, the last cable car descends at 4.50pm, and as we were running out of time, we decided to hike to a viewpoint just below the peak, Mirador La Fortaleza. Okay, so I've sat down for a bit of a breather. The air's pretty thin and you can really feel yourself having a shortness of breath. Um, but that's easily forgotten when you just keep looking out to these views. So you can see the sea, see right over there. And right over here, it's very rocky. It reminds me a bit of what Mars would look like. And then actually, if you look even further, you can see the dense forest that we drove through to get here. So you get all sorts of terrains and it's pretty epic. And then if you go even further, you see the clouds. Um, so yeah, you've got to take moments to catch your breath and just sit and absorb this, this wonder. I mean, it doesn't seem real. And so, with the viewpoint in sight, we pressed on to our final stop. So we've made it to the viewpoint here on Mount Heyday and it is awesome. The views are absolutely breathtaking, quite literally. Um, the path coming here was a little bit rocky so I recommend good footwear. But what's also awesome is that you've got the peak of the volcano up here and although we couldn't get a permit to get up to the top, it doesn't matter because we can still see the steam coming off the volcano at the top and it's, it's epic. Reaching the top of Tede marks the end of our time in Tenerife and what an amazing journey it has been. Where Santa Cruz was laid back, cultured and felt very Spanish, Tede National Park was like a journey to another planet. If you're coming to Tenerife on holiday, then you owe it to yourself to hire a car and get out here to explore. Both Santa Cruz and Tede are wonderful day trips from the south and either will make for a truly memorable experience. Have you been to Tenerife before? Well, we'd love to hear about your holiday and any tips you have for visiting the island. Just leave us a comment below. Anyway, that's all from me, but I'll see you in the next one.